Welcome to Lesson 11 of Humanities 1101 at West Georgia Technical College. In this lesson, we will be discussing the Americas. The Americas refers to the three regions now known as North, Central, and South America. This lesson is designed to be a brief overview of thousands of years of history for both the indigenous peoples of these lands, as well as the later populations who came from other parts of the world. Because it covers so much time and so many cultures, we will not be able to go into any enormous amounts of detail. However, I would encourage you to do further research on any of these topics that pique your interest. The First Nations left a legacy of significant art, architecture, and religious contributions to the Americas. Architecture is what is most recognizable when we think about ancient indigenous civilizations in the West, partially because these structures are all we have left of certain tribes. Pyramids in South America, left by the Maya and the Inca, are the best known, but many other structures, such as Mesa Verde, the ancient cliff dwelling of the Anasazi, the ancestors of the Pueblo Nation, are every bit the marvels of engineering and art as their counterparts are in Egypt and Jordan. The cliff dwellings were incredible entire homes and communities built directly into the sides of mountains, accessible through networks of ladders and so well constructed they have survived to the modern day to the point that tourists can still explore the ruins despite having been completed almost a thousand years ago in the 1190s. The ancient Pueblo inhabited Mesa Verde primarily on the cliff tops before moving to the cliff dwellings for nearly a millennia before simply vanishing. In modern context, the Anasazi and the ancient Pueblo have been a source of fascination featured in the novels of Western writer Louis L'Amour and sci-fi television shows such as The X-Files. There are actually more pyramids built by the Mesoamerican peoples than in any other part of the world. Some of these impressive structures include Machu Picchu, the famous pyramid of the Peru of Peru, built by the Inca around 1450 CE. The pyramids of the sun and the moon, built by the Teotihuacan people between 200 and 250 CE and named by the Aztecs, and the Pyramid of Cuculcan, which is also known as El Castillo, built by the Maya between 800 and 900 CE in Chichen Itza, Mexico. More than tombs, although some of them do contain the graves of rulers, these were often places of ritualistic worship and sometimes human sacrifice but in a different sort of way from the sacrifice of spouses and servants in the Egyptian pyramids. These pyramids have also made their way into the modern imagination through more than just a few books and movies. The First Nations of North America have also left a legacy in the Americas, much of which has been passed down through oral traditions. Many of the stories, both histories and legends, have been preserved to the present day by indigenous storytellers. One of the most incredible of these storytellers was Mary Frances Thompson Fisher, known more commonly by her stage name Teata. In a time when Native American culture was outlawed, Teata preserved the stories of the Chickasaw Nation, performing first in a traveling Wild West show, then performing in the parlors of the wealthy of New York City to pay the bills while she tried to make her way on Broadway, ultimately performing for Eleanor Roosevelt and then eventually for President Roosevelt. Not only did her work preserve Native culture, as she traveled she learned the stories and legends of other Indigenous peoples, but she also brought the music and traditions of the First Nations to the attention of mainstream American culture in the early 1900s. The Americas have produced countless other contributions to the humanities outside of ancient architecture and indigenous spiritualism. 
Some of the most important aspects have been in the areas of literature, philosophy, and religion, with, which often converge with one another in practical application. Religion has played a key role in America's cultural development. Many of the denominations we commonly see today in America, and particularly in the South, came by way of European immigrants because of movements like the Reformation. The Baptists came from England, Methodists from Wales, Presbyterians from Scotland, Lutherans from Germany, and so on. For many generations, religion informed politics, society, music, art, and the overall culture of the Americas. A blend of Protestantism and Catholicism in North America, depending on the region, and in, predom and in predominantly and predominantly Catholicism in Central and South America. Much of the design of American churches has also come from the architectural styles of churches in many European countries. Christianity was used to both defend and attack the institution of slaveholding, and even the style of much of Southern preaching was impacted by Welsh ministers who delivered their sermons in the style of Huil, or the holy wine. This style even influenced well-known ministers such as Martin Luther King Jr. In Latin America, Christianity blended with indigenous beliefs, the result of which has given the world a taste of events such as Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead, which in turn has influenced even non-Latin, non-Catholic culture through popular representations such as the one depicted in the Disney Pixar film, Coco. American film, an offshoot of traditional theater with its roots in the ancient theater forms of both Europe and Asia, is perhaps the most well-funded, most viewed film in the world. Not only have the Americas produced too many numerous thespians and movie stars to even begin to name, but English language Hollywood movies are viewed in nearly every country of the world, and American movie stars are often just as renowned overseas as they are in America. In a similar way, American music and musicians have influenced world culture for the last century or two and continue to have a major impact on the arts and culture of the world around us today. In the modern world, the music and film industry dominate our arts and culture in much the same way as popular product manufacturing might dominate an economy. Arts and culture have been monetized on the large scale and less and less art is done for the sake of art. Very little funding and emphasis has been placed on saving traditional American arts and culture, both that of the indigenous peoples, as well as that which is called Americana. Americana would include things like the traditional loom and weaving work of Appalachia, as well as the shape note singing and music of the Appalachian mountains, which stretch from New York to Alabama. These examples are just the tiniest selection of the humanities of the Americas. It is difficult to summarize the wide variety of arts and culture from prehistory to present across two continents. And there has been too much art, too much architecture, music, theater, philosophy, religion, and literature across too many languages to adequately cover all of it in just one brief lesson or one brief lecture. It could cover an entire semester all on its own.